It's hard to believe, but the NBA season is here uh, before the first games tip off today, later tonight, uh, 4.30 Eastern time, I believe, is the first tip for Celtics 76ers. I just wanted to run through all of the teams and give quick predictions. I'm going to split this into two videos. I was going to just do one big one, but it kind of makes sense to do Eastern and Western conferences. I was going to do this over the weekend, had half of it recorded, and then some more things decided to pop off because... That's just kind of how it goes. So I apologize for this being late. Uh, this will be up sometime Tuesday. Both parts I'm going to put up at around the same time. Uh, hopefully you enjoy them. Appreciate anyone watching. If uh, you're new here, please leave a like, subscribe, any of that good stuff. Uh, and also, if you have thoughts or predictions on any of these teams, let me know. Let me know in the comments what you're excited for, what you're excited to see. I feel like the first games of the season, like I saw people making like Christmas Eve jokes. Like, what are you going to leave for Adam Silver? Like, be sure to leave out, like, milk and cookies for Adam Silver tonight. Like, just stuff like that. And it, it is. It's just an exciting thing because everyone thinks their team is going to be really good. Or you're a Lakers fan and you're a little bit more concerned. <laughs> but uh, it's a lot of time for optimism. There's a lot of things that we just haven't seen that I'm excited to see. All of the rookies, Zion's return, uh, the new look Cavs. Uh, we'll get to them in a few minutes. But really excited about a lot of things this season, which never was the case for me growing up. I always was just a Laker fan, and that was it. I was like, <laughs> I hated every team that the Lakers played and had rivalries with. Like, the Kings, the Suns, the Spurs, hated them all. Clippers, still kind of don't like them. But as I've gotten older, I've really started to appreciate players, schemes, other teams, coaching, all of those finer things become just a joy to watch the entire league so without further ado i'm giving myself 30 seconds for every team we will start with the eastern conference which means we are starting with the atlanta hawks now the hawks had their huge splash trade for Dejounte murray and i do think it makes them a little bit better but i don't necessarily think it puts them in the same echelon as those top four east teams Boston, Milwaukee, Miami, and Brooklyn. I think the other teams behind them have gotten better too, specifically the Knicks and the Cavs. So I, I do see the upside here for the Hawks, but I kind of just want to see it for a week or two before I'm uh, I'm ready to like crown them as one of the top tier teams. But I think they're going to play well together. Next up, we have the Boston Celtics, who had their big scandal with head coach Ime Udoka a few weeks ago. But other than that, they're bringing back a lot of the same team. They traded a lot of players that were deep bench players for Malcolm Brogdon, who should shore up uh, the defense for this team that was already one of the best defenses historically last season. Uh, that'll take a load off of uh, Marcus Smart as well in the playmaking department should he stay healthy, and there's no reason this team shouldn't be right back in the playoffs. Next up, we have the Brooklyn Nets, who kind of just going to be a chemistry experiment for the first, uh, really the whole regular season. This is a team that is all title or bust. Doesn't matter that they added in TJ Warren. Doesn't matter that they're bringing uh, Ben Simmons in finally, who has looked like he fits really well with that team, by the way. None of it matters until they get to the playoffs, because if that is where all of these guys are, are, they're there to go to the playoffs. Anything other than a final strip is disappointing, but it'll still be a fun ride. Next up, we have the Charlotte Hornets, which the less I say about them, probably the better. They have had an unbelievably bad offseason, losing tons of players to actual legal troubles, like really concerning legal troubles. LaMelo's already hurt to start the year, and I think this team could be one to quickly pull the plug and start tanking for Victor Wembanyama. So look for dudes like Gordon Hayward, Tor Terry Rozier, and PJ Washington to probably be pretty hot topics in the trade market. Now next up, we have the Chicago Bulls, who kind of seem to just be a bad victim of circumstance when it comes to injuries. Injuries derailed them last year. They're already down starting point guard Lonzo Ball. Granted, DeMar DeRozan had an MVP-type year, and there's nothing that says he can't come out and do the same thing again. But Nikola Vucevic needs to look like Nikola Vucevic for this whole thing to work. You have Zach Levine, DeMar DeRozan playing at all-star levels. I would assume he's going to need to step up, and then Vooch has to be the centerpiece of it all. Next up, we have the Cleveland Cavaliers, who made the splash of the summer trading for Donovan Mitchell. They accelerated their uh, their plan, their roadmap to rebuilding, and they are now launching themselves into that top tier of the East discussion. 
don't think they're going to be able to, like, kind of like what I said with the um, the Hawks, I think they're going to have to prove it, but I think this is going to be an unbelievable core to watch. Garland and Mitchell playmaking with the rim protection of Mobley and Allen and their versatility offensively, this is a league pass must watch. The Detroit Pistons had one of the better drafts, bringing in Jaden Ivey and Jalen Duran who will answer a lot of questions that they had this last season. The move has already seemed to uh, take a load off of Killian Hayes, who is now being able to kind of just play his game. He doesn't have to be anything he's not. Sliding Jaden Ivey right in next to Cade Cunningham gives the Pistons one of the longest and most defensively harassing backcourts in the East, and I think they're going to be a fun team night in and night out. All right, the Indiana Pacers are kind of in this weird mode where they're too good to tank, but they're too bad to compete, really. They're going to probably be a fringe play-in team uh, unless they shut it down early. Tyrese Halliburton is going to be their linchpin. Uh, they drafted Benedict Matherin, who absolutely looks like a steal from the draft thus far. Chris Duarte was a really good shooter for his rookie year, and he's only going to get better. question is if they're going to keep Miles Turner and Buddy Heald or if that's going to become Russell Westbrook. All right, next up we have the Miami Heat, who didn't really do much in the offseason. They lost P.J. Tucker, which is a blow to them having that tough type of enforcer player. But the good news is they have like five more players that fit that role. Uh, and for them, it's all about staying healthy, maintaining consistency, staying a home court team, and then getting to the playoffs. Jimmy Butler, Kyle Lowry, Bam Adebayo, Tyler Hero, they're still just as deep as ever. They just need to make sure that they're all healthy when they need it most because Jimmy Butler in the playoffs is someone I do not want to see. Similarly, I think the Milwaukee Bucks are going to be on the same type of path where it's about getting healthy. Drew Holiday uh, and Giannis did great together, but the Bucks' last playoffs really missed Chris Middleton. And you wouldn't think about it, but he was a key part to their finals run too. So as long as they can stay healthy, there's no reason that they're not going to be dominant night in, night out just on their depth and their coaching and their skill level. And Giannis is probably going to stay right in the mix of that MVP discussion because it's not like he's going to slow down. Next up, we have the New York Knicks, who added Jalen Brunson in the offseason, probably because of some tampering, but that's neither here nor there. But the Knicks get the point guard that they wanted, the star point guard that they wanted, to pair up with Derrick Rose, Julius Randle, R.J. Barrett, Obi Toppin, Mitchell Robinson. You know the names. All of this is to say... They're going to probably be up and down this year. Julius Randle's really going to have to be the one to uh, step up and return to his all-NBA form, or they're going to be looking at another disappointing season. With the Orlando Magic up next, who had a great draft, taking Paulo Bancaro first overall, shocking the world, and they find themselves kind of just loaded with talent, loaded with young talent. They're a team that I think could be an interesting trade candidate, because they're not going to be someone that's tanking for Wembenyama. They have Wendell Carter Jr., who they just re-signed. Mo Bama's still there. Franz Wagner, Cole Anthony, Jalen Suggs, Markel Fultz. That's not even saying anything about Jonathan Isaac. This is a deep, young team that is like two moves away from being a really good team. We got the Philadelphia 76ers up next, who, for them, it's very similar to Brooklyn. This is a championship or bust team. The regular season does not matter. I don't care if Embiid wins the MVP. I don't care if James Harden looks good. I think Ty Tyrese Maxey is going to have a breakout year, probably be most improved this year. But none of this matters until they get to the playoffs and they get these monkeys off their back because Doc Rivers has a reputation for just not being able to get the job done. And the 76ers are going to have to wear that until they prove people are wrong. Next up, we have the Toronto Raptors. Probably a player or two away from being serious contenders in the East, but they're a team that just does not make mistakes. Nick Nurse is a great head coach. He won the title his first year. Granted, this team looks very different than that team, but Fred Van Vliet, Scotty Barnes, Gary Trent Jr., and Pascal Siakam, still a pretty damn good uh, core to have. And they're adding in Josh Jackson, Juancho Hernan Gomez, and Otto Porter, who are just upside guys that know how to play the game. And finally, we round out the Eastern Conference with the Washington Wizards. Who knows? This is probably going to be a bottom part of the East team unless Bradley Beal can stay healthy, gels really well with Chris Tapps Porzingis, and they get the absolute best out of guys like Will Barton, Monty Morris, and Kyle Kuzma. They're going to need those role players to play big. Uh, they're going to need Bradley Beal to take another leap as a playmaker as well as a scorer. 
Obviously, he can score in his sleep, but he's going to really have to step up to facilitate a lot more as well. And I think that's everybody in the Eastern Conference. Um, I'm going to do these again probably closer to the All-Star break, halfway point, somewhere around there, just to see how I did, to see what, uh, what the season's looking like for these teams. So thank you very much for watching. This video will probably go up first and then the Western Conference, but I'll link each one to each other in the, in the description. And like I said, if you have thoughts on any of these teams, predictions, anything like that, this is the place to drop them, right in the comment section, because today is a good day. Today is a joyous day. We are celebrating NBA being back. Thank you very much for watching, and enjoy the games today.